All right, we're joined in the Sonoma Raceway Media Center by race winner Tody Stewart, driver of the number 14 Code 3 Social Mobile 1 Chevrolet. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will start by opening up to the media. Questions, please. We'll start with Holly Kane and then go to Jerry Jordan and over to Phil. Go ahead, Holly. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Uh, Tony, that last lap, could you just talk us through that, which, what that was like for you? Well, I, I'll go back a lap before because I think that set up the last lap, to be honest. I, uh, when I went down in seven, the second to last lap, I wheel hopped it pretty big, and, and Denny got right to us there. and uh, We held him off through the, the rest of the lap and the first half of the last lap, and but he was really close to us off of four and enough that I knew I couldn't, I couldn't help but cheat the corner. And I gave him the whole outside. If he wanted to go around me on the outside, I was going to give him all the room he wanted, but I wasn't going to give him the inside. So, uh, um, but I went down and wheel hopped it again. And, and he saw it from the lap before and he knew that he knew to take advantage of that. So, uh, you know, I assume he did. I, he, he got us there. So, uh, you know, but that's when he went by us. I mean, I, that was probably the one thing I was most proud of is I didn't, panic and jump in the gas and spin the tires real hard trying to stay with him and just try to get off the corner like I had and try to just stay with him through through the corner there and get through 10 and thought maybe we could stay close enough that we could have a shot back at him and uh, you know when he went into 11 I I was probably more surprised than anybody I didn't couldn't believe I mean as good as he was breaking into 11 all day I couldn't believe he missed the corner and they said he wheel hopped it but um, I, I was shocked that the door was open like that, but you can't crack the door open with me on the last corner of the last lap and expect me to not take it. <laughs> I was going to kick the door in or drive a bulldozer through it to, to keep it open. So, uh, you know, I, when you're in a scenario like that, you, I don't know if I'm going to get another scenario or opportunity to, to win a race the rest of the year. And we're going to try, but, you know, knowing that that could be the difference between making the chase or not making the chase, I wasn't going to be cordial on the exit of the corner and I roughed him up pretty good there and if it had been a street fight he'd had two black eyes after that so I mean I used him up pretty hard but um you know it, probably one of the best parts and one of the parts that I'll probably remember most of this race was before I got to victory lane and Denny landed in there and the first thing he said is I'm I'm so damn proud of you and um you know that that meant the world to me I mean I told him right after that, I said you know I had to do that and he goes I know so uh, <laughs> yeah so I mean it, it just shows what kind of guys we're racing with and, and the respect we all have for each other it's you know what's on the line you know what's at stake and you know especially at a place like this when it comes down to to turn 11 I mean that's where all the action is anyway so uh you know I just I couldn't believe how clean a race it was I mean it it just where's where's that race been for the last eight years we've been coming here I mean it's you know normally you get guys driving through each other and over each other and running each other off the road and everything and it, we just didn't see a lot of that today it, it made for a even if we finished 16th or 17th where we were running before we Mike made the call to come in on the pit stop I mean I was I had fun all day and that was our goal you know it was you know we struggled all, all day on Friday and all four of our cars kind of fought the same problem and I don't know we I still don't know what it is but we still fought it I mean felt like the first two runs of the day we were respectable and then it seemed like guys got better and we we couldn't I couldn't match the pace anymore and the harder I ran it the more I made my problem worse so uh you know it was, it was a matter of I don't think Mike and I either way thought 17th was I mean that's just kind of where we were and that's kind of where we were speed wise I think at that time and uh but it was like, you know, we we talked about four different scenarios before the race and not knowing how much tires were going to fall off. And that's the thing I, you know, I've, I've had some awesome crew chiefs, but that's something I'm really proud of. But Mike, he will sit there the night before the race. He won't go out. He won't go with me to dirt races and he won't go play. When we took crew guys to Six Flags last night and he stayed home and did homework. And we, we all waved out the window and said bye dad and then stopped and said hey you forgot to give us money for the amusement park <laughs> <laughs> he pointed at me and said i was pointing at the wrong guy <laughs> but, um, but he stayed and did his homework i mean that and that's what i'm i'm really proud of him at how he does that i mean he's so he's so detail oriented on that and, I, and all my crew chiefs have been but they all have their own different style and that's something about mike that i really respect and appreciate and 
you know, I got in this morning and, you know, best thing for me to do tonight for the race is forget about the race and just go have fun with my guys. And that's what I did. And, um, you know, then we, we got, got here this morning, we talked about four, literally four different scenarios for how we, how we could run the race. And we knew, kind of figured by lap 15 of the first stint that we would kind of have a direction on what, what, what which one of those four avenues we were going to go. And, and we kind of in the middle of two of them and, and then, you know, we got kind of shuffled back and it seemed like when I, when I could run my own pace and run the track the way I want to run it, I could, I could run respectable. But then when restarts and, you know, we got kind of jumbled up in the middle there a couple of times and then you got to fight and you got claw and scratch and everything else to get positions there. And, um, you know, I got fighting with Denny or not Denny, but, um, Brad Keselowski and Newman and, you know, that's two guys that'll make you earn everything you get, but they'll, and I, I drove like an idiot. I, cause I told him on the radio, I said, I'm, I told him I'm driving like an a-hole out here. And, and I was, I mean, I was, I was over driving my car. I was trying to do everything I could to get as much position early in the run as I could. So I could try to run my pace and try to, um, do the things to help save my tires, but I, I couldn't keep the pace doing it and I wasn't going to leave anything on the table. So, um, like I said, I mean, we, Mike was the one that made that call, and then for the caution to come out on our outlap, I mean, that was a perfect scenario for us, and it gave us the opportunity, but I I still didn't even feel like we had a shot then. I mean, I thought, well, we might be able to hang on to a top 10 out of this, and, and that was going to be pretty respectable, I thought, but you know, the great thing was after the restart there, you know, Denny was behind us right away, and the first couple laps, we kind of had a nice little margin, and you know, just kind of held it, and then... Um, Truex got racing him, got by him, and and uh, that gave us a little bit of ground back, and or vice versa, whoever it was. And but um, you know that that gave me the the chance to run the track the way I wanted, and that's you know that's where I make speed if I can do it the way I like to do it and know to do it. And you know I was able to take care of it. You know when Denny got back ahead of Martin, I the, the laps are winding down, and he's gaining ground in a hurry, and you know it's. It's use everything you got. You, if I left anything on the table and ran second and felt like I left anything out there, I was going to be a, a miserable a hole the rest of the ride home today too. <laughs> so I, I would have got it on both ends. But um, you know, it, 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 I was I was vulnerable in, in seven. I mean, that was I needed to be able to adjust my brakes for seven and then make a different adjustment for on my brakes for turn eleven. But you know, it's to reach off the steering wheel and make an adjustment sometimes is, is a distraction and I. I felt like I could manage it, and when I made that mistake, you know, coming to the white, that was, that's what set that whole last lap up. Did I get I anything? I mean, I think I talked about <laughs> We are completing our I think I talked about everything but what I had for breakfast this morning. So. Well, that's what Jerry's going to ask you. Jerry, and I'll just then... I'll go now. I had pasta for breakfast. We go <laughs> everything. We'll go to Jerry, Phil, and then over to Bob. Jerry Jordan, former Station Network, and kicking the tires. Okay, you went three wide. You didn't get pissed off at anybody in the racing. You just said the F word. Is this what fun is for you? Which F word did I say? Did I you say said that? fun. You said. Oh, <laughs> man, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I almost made it through the whole day without getting fined. <laughs> I did. I will say this. I can't wait for Tuesday because I told Mike Helton I've been waiting for this day for a long time to see how much you get fined for a fight. And he laughed at me. I said, well, look at it this way. I got a lot of scores to settle with people. I only got six months to do it. I just got to figure out if it's economically feasible to do it. <laughs> so, I'm waiting, so I'm waiting to see what, uh, see, waiting to see what, I'll be the one by five o'clock on Tuesday reading every social media thing out there. But I'm going to go to Zaxby's and eat chicken all week just in support of John West. Hey, I'm all for it, man. I'm glad to see somebody had some emotion and actually did something with it. He, I'm going to live my life through him for this week. So uh, at least I did last night. We, we all went to the amusement park, and we went to a restaurant, and they had it on the TV. And we, were all, we all got up from the table and walked over toward the bar area, and they, we finally pressured everybody at the bar to turn one of the TVs on to where we could watch it. That made my whole day last night was watching the truck race. So I was, I was ecstatic. So see one of our buddies, Christopher Bell, win, and I was checking on my buddy Rico and had no idea John West Townley was going to make my top five hero list of all time. So, <laughs> so I'm following him on social media now. <laughs> all right, over to Phil. Did I even answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? I don't remember. It was this fun. Oh, yeah, it was great. I, Bob, 
I sat there and I took, took the checker flag and Booga's telling me how great everything was. And I'm looking in the mirror, I'm thinking, I'm about to get destroyed by Denny. So when he, when he waved on the way by, I'm like, okay, I can take a break. <laughs> so yes, we're having fun now. Phil. Hey, Bob. Tony, uh, over here to your right. Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Uh, I, we've heard you here before talk about how much you hate blocking and get annoyed when drivers do that. You spent the last 22 laps in the lead. What was your approach during that time, and, and what's acceptable and, and what's not for the leader in that situation? Well, especially when it came to Denny, lap five, he blocked me. So I thought, well, okay, it's a little early, but, um, you know, I'm in a, little, in a little different scenario than the rest of these guys. I mean, this was my last chance, and, and I still don't, I still don't like it. You know, the, the thing I was doing was when I came off the corner, I went to that line right away, and I made my intentions known that I was going to the inside on the entry of the corner. I gave him the outside, and, you know, the, the ones you don't like is when you make a move, and then a guy makes a move and tries to run you down even further, so... Um, you know, it's, I don't know, I, I'm confused myself on when it started being acceptable. And, you know, I started seeing it on, you know, listening to sports car or watching sports car races on TV and they're talking about defending their position. And I always thought defending your position was getting off the corner fast enough to not give the guy an opportunity to do something. But, um, you know, I, I probably, I'm not a big fan of it. And, but I got two road course races left in my career. and. If that's if I got to play ball like they play ball to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it. So, uh, you know, this especially you know last five laps. I mean, this was this may be our only opportunity to get in the chase. You know, to get a win this year. So, um, you know, you, you, I believe in etiquette and I believe in racing guys the way that I want to be raced, and and uh, that's not the way I like to race those guys. But they, you know, Denny knew what what was at stake for us and what the opportunity for us was, and and. You know, most of those guys did. I, nobody, I thought it was a great race. I mean, I, like I said, we didn't see guys shoving each other off the racetrack. I mean, it was good racing all day. So, um, you know, I followed guys that blocked, but I didn't, I didn't see anything that normally by the time you leave here, you're so mad at everybody. And you just, all I do, I go back and I sit in the transporter and take a shower in there and sit for a half hour because I don't want to see him at the helicopter pad. You know, because I'm so mad at a dozen guys, and I'm like, I can't whip them all at once. I can just take them one at a time, but I can't. I, there's a couple of them I might be able to take at the same time, but not a lot of them like that. So you can pick which ones they are. You're pretty, pretty savvy on that. But, um, but yeah, you just, you know, it's not exactly the way you want to do it by any means. But it's still, I thought it was, I didn't see what was going on behind us and didn't get to see any of that all day. But we didn't, you know. We had a debris caution was the first caution. We never get a debris caution here. Um, normally we have five cautions in the last 10, 15 laps. I mean, we had one, and it was for a car that was stopped off the side. It wasn't even for a wreck. So, I, I mean, I, I would say it was probably a pretty good race. I mean, a pretty clean race from that standpoint. Yeah, not one, not one wreck. What was Boyer's deal? So, oh. Glad he got out of that then. <laughs> It'd be really hard to listen to him next year. And <laughs> he's hard enough to hear on the radio as it is because he's ADD anyway. It's like, dude, just take a breath and slow down. And we'll... It takes five people and it's like every breath somebody picks a different part of the sentence to try to understand. It's like a game show. It's like, take Clip Warrior for 600, please. So... <laughs> We'll go to we'll go over to Bob, Bob Lee, and then Jim Utter. I'm just trying to buy time. I'm so hot. I, I'm loving the air conditioning. It feels <laughs> my suit feels like it's about 45 degrees right now, and I'm, my body's loving it. So. Uh, Bob Hocker, CSPN. Um, Harvick said this maybe gives you a little bit of closure for three years of frustration, and your dad said that no matter kind of what happens the rest of the year, it's now a good year. So I'm kind of curious what, how you feel what you feel this win means for your in your final season you know somebody else asked because i i was thinking more of my guys than me you know i i'm excited for mike to get his first win and proud that i could get him a win before the year and um you know excited for this team i mean my guys my guys have been through this whole disastrous roller coaster for the last three or four years and never backed down they've never quit on me um and there's days i've quit on myself and they're the guys that send you text messages and call you when you get home and they're like hey this isn't over so um, I'm proud for them and, and it meant more for me to, to get it for them than myself but it's uh, you know I guess the one thing that I was that I did think about is you know 
in this day of social media where everybody's a cricket. A lot of people are crickets on social media. They sit there and chirp, 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 chirp until they got to be in front of you and then they don't say a damn word. And listening to people say, I'm old and washed up. And I know how old I am and I know I haven't ran good for the last three years. And uh, But I felt like, you know, if we got things right, that it was still there. And like I, you know, like I was telling Don Hawk after the race, I said, we had a restart with 14 laps to go on an 11 turn track and I missed three corners. I don't know how many corners that is. I mean, doing the math, but it's what, 160 corners, 150 some odd corners. And I screwed up three of them. And the rest of it, I felt like I was the Tony Stewart that has won here and led laps here in the past. So um, I don't feel like I have to prove anything to myself. I mean, I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I'm still happy about my decision to, to make the change I'm making next year. But it, you know, after Jeff set the bar pretty high last year, you know, winning a race in a clutch to get to the, the last race at Homestead and, uh, you know, just to be able to be in the chase if we can make it. I mean, we're still not out of the woods yet. We still got work to do and Daytona next week can be, I mean, we're, we're nine out right now and we could be 39 out by the time we leave Daytona. So it's, it's, there's a lot that can happen still, but, um, you know, I'm proud of where we are. I mean, for two guys, for a brand new crew chief and driver combinations, didn't get a chance to work with each other till the ninth or 10th race. I, I feel like we're, Feel like we're gaining ground here, and, and I'm I'm proud of those guys. I'm really proud of what they're doing. And you're happy racing the Sprint Cup car before... today. <laughs> <laughs> Check with me. Most likely, when Daytona starts on Friday, not so much. <laughs> so we all know how I feel about restrictor plate racing, but um, you know. All right, Bob, you want to hand the mic next to you? Oh, I'm sorry. It's with yeah. Go ahead. Go there, and then to Lee. Donna Beth Wellman, Benicia Harold. Um, you were talking earlier about, and I'm going to use the word grit, that you and Jeff Gordon have, and with uh, you all exiting the racing. What do you see ahead for NASCAR racing and the young drivers coming up? you seen Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott. <laughs> There's two guys right there that are filling seats that got this under control. There's the, Brian France, I got in trouble. Well, I, I started to say I got in trouble once with Brian France. I had, that's a lot. I got in trouble a lot with Brian Fitz. <laughs> but I got in trouble enough one day that I got invited to fly down to Daytona Beach, Florida and go to his office where I sat in the lobby for 30 minutes waiting on him. And then I was only in there for 10 minutes. And then I got to drive back and fly home. So, uh, but I remember him telling me, and, and I'm only saying this because it's the truth. I mean, he was right. And, and it was something that resonated. He's like, you know, you're not bigger than this sport, you know, and you're, you're a star in the sport, but there were stars before you and there's stars coming after you. So, you know, with Jeff and I leaving, there's, there's Chase Elliott's going to win a championship and, and, you know, if the Wood Brothers keep going the way they are, Ryan Blaney's going to win a lot of races too and potentially win championships. So there's plenty of stock coming along that, that's, that's got the opportunity to, to have fantastic finishes and make big names for themselves and, you know, 10 years down the road, Gordon and I will be like, the new people that are watching the sport will be like, who are these old guys? And I'm going to go, this is the guy that took me to the sand dunes and broke my back. So <laughs> he'll probably do it again. So. <laughs> but we'll have fun. Yeah, there's, there's, the sport's healthy, trust me. There's, there's plenty of good drivers. I mean, I'm, I'm meeting new drivers every day that are in the wings that are running k and cars. And, uh, you know, the hard part for us is, you know, you used to read about them in the paper because they were winning a late model race here or there. There's, these are 16-year-old kids that just got out. Of, they're not even out of high school. So it's hard to even know who they are, but, you know, every time they get here. I mean, I didn't know who William Byron was. And the guy, kid wins a truck race. And I'm like, how did that happen? You know, they want another one. So it's, there's, there's plenty of talent that's coming along that's going to, they, they won't miss us in about 10 years. Go Lee, and then to Jim. LeeSpencerMotorsport.com. Hamlin said on Thursday that when you guys were in a similar situation at Watkins Glen, he was afraid to knock you out of the way because you would have kicked his ass afterwards. Did you? He was right. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you if you do a good enough job and get that ingrained in their head, that is a powerful tool in a race. It's smart. That's strategy. Go ahead. But you, you you think there is that there's been that fear factor that screw with me and no. Okay. No, and it, you know, especially somebody like Denny. I mean, I we were teammates, and you know, when he, I I was said in my head when when I felt him nudge me in seven, I'm like, well done, because he didn't he didn't just knock me off the racetrack or anything. He 
he saw what happened the lap before, and then when I got down there again, I got myself in that same position, and he took advantage of it. And he, he could have been a lot rougher with it. He could have knocked me off the track. He could have spun me, whatever, and, and won the race. And, you know, he, he went on, and I went on. And, you know, like I said, I, you don't see him make mistakes like that very often. But he, he made a mistake and gave me the opportunity. I'm not sure I could have got to him. I, I'm not sure he had enough of a gap that I'm not sure I could have got to him and, and roughed him up any other way. Um, but when he missed the corner, it gave me a big opportunity to get there. The, the gap that I needed was available then to, to get the rest of the way. But no, I mean, the, we, we respect each other a lot. There's 90% of the guys in the field I, I have a ton of respect for. And there's 5 or 6% of them that I, I knocked them over the grandstands. If that's what it took to win a race, I wouldn't have cared. But Denny's not one of those guys. Denny's one I really respect. and. You know, in 2011, when we won the championship, the race at Martinsville that, that we won, um, he, I was racing him really hard to stay on the lead lap, and he could have, he, he cut me a break a couple times, and that was key. I mean, that, that, helped, that was what helped us win the, win the championship and give us the points that we needed. So, I mean, it, it, we've got a lot of respect for each other, and, you know, I, I sat there, and as soon as they threw the checkered, I didn't, I didn't slow down right away because I'm like, the faster I go, the less of a running start he's going to have to plow into me. <laughs> so, uh, but he pulled up beside me and thumbs up, and I'm like, great, I don't want to have to fight today. So it was nice. And, and you, you, brought up 20, you brought up 2011. Is you feel like you or your team is in a position where you could catch fire the way you did that magical season and you know, go into the chase and you know, just balls out to the end? I like the way you put it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be that way when I get home tonight. Nobody's going to know because I'm going to be by myself in the house, which is great. So um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to go with the same approach we had before. I mean, I, I told them, you know, uh, I think we're gaining on it. I, I think it's a scenario where you, you crawl before you walk, you walk before you jog, you jog before you run, you run before you sprint. It's, it's phases that we're going at. And I felt like Michigan – and Pocono, we, we got we got jogging, and we, we, we're getting closer to being where we need to be. I mean, we're, we're not there yet, but we still got time to get there, and we've, we've gained a, sh a bunch of ground in a short amount of time. And if we can keep making that ground and keep getting better, um, who knows? I mean, you know how I am. I mean, I, I sat there the whole media day in, in 11 and said, I'm wasting my time and all your time being here because I'm not going to be a factor in this thing. And, and we went out and won the first two races and won five of them. So I, I'm not that smart, obviously, so don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we got to get there first, though. I mean, we, Daytona's going to be a big hurdle. I mean, we, it's, as much as you want to go win that thing, it's crisis management more than anything, I think, because I think if we can get through that, I feel like our performance is good enough to get us the rest of the way there. we just got to gotta take care of ourselves to get through there. To Jim and then uh, the gentleman in the back row. JimMutterMotorsport.com. Tony, when you were recovering and getting ready to come back, a lot of people, a lot of fans were trying to, uh, wanted to convince you to put off your retirement for a year, and you were adamant that this, you had said this was it, and we're going to continue on with that. Uh, when you came back to the actual track for the first time, did you come with any expectations or any idea what might be possible this season? And did you even think that something like today would be possible? You really don't know. I mean, that's the hard thing. I mean, I'm starting a season with a new crew chief that I hadn't worked with. And, um, you know, I, I think the best thing that happened was, you know, doing going against doctor's orders. They wanted me staying home and, you know, going to the track and being on the pit box and having a radio on and listen to him communicate. I think it made it easier for me to, to learn him, but he didn't get a chance to learn me. So... <laughs> To, to know, I mean, what, the way we were hoping the season would start, obviously, was totally derailed, and, and you really don't know what to expect out of it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a learning process with him. And, and you know, like I say, he's, I think he's doing a great job. I mean, he, he, he takes an approach I've never seen anybody else do. And, I mean, he studies. I mean, we, I can't remember what race it was. I, we flew out together maybe to California or, you know, Phoenix or something, and he was watching the entire race and writing notes down off of the, the previous race there. So, um, you know, I, I, don't know, I don't know that I really had any expectations. It's hard to know until you get out there and get a baseline. 
once you get a baseline, then you can kind of say, well, this is what I expect for the year. But, um, you know, I, I said after Michigan, I'm like, we're, we're starting to gain momentum here. And Pocono, we were gaining momentum. I just got a, we got buried on a restart there, and, and, and I lost it. You know, plain and simple, I just lost it. But the car was pretty good. I mean, we, I felt like we gained ground there, and then we went and gained even, built off of that at Michigan and gained even more ground. So I feel like we're, we're going the right direction. We just got to keep clawing at it. Dominic, I've got to go on the racingexperts.com. After today's win, is it possible to say we're, we're this ranks in comparison to the other Spring Cup victories if possible? Definitely exciting for sure. I mean, it's, um, I, don't, I don't know, Jim or somebody, you guys would probably have to help me out. I don't know that it's really came down to a last corner pass for us here on the wins that we had at this track, but, you know, I don't think it had. So, but it, you know, especially in your last year, I mean, that means a lot. And, and this is this has always been one of my favorite tracks. But it's I've always told people this this is one of those tracks that it's either you leave here happy, or you leave here so mad you can't see straight. And normally the restarts and the chaos and the restarts make you mad. And uh, you know we didn't have that today. And I was I told him and he he asked me he goes he asked me before the restart he goes he having fun. I said yeah. I said I'm not even mad at anybody yet. And I said that's pretty amazing to be within 15 laps of the finish and I'm not mad at anybody. So I was least, least hopeful that that was going to continue. I just didn't know that we were going to have a chance to win the race with it. Holly K in NASCAR.com. I was in your pits for the final few laps and when you won, it was a very emotional moment for a lot of people in the pits. This was, you know, really tugged on some hearts. You seem to be very matter of fact and, and business about it somewhat right now, but I mean, how emotional is it for you to, to get this done? Well, about eight to go was the first time I thought, hey, we might actually have a shot to hold on to this. And, and I actually got a little bit emotional thinking about it while I was driving. And, but, it, you know, you, you stay so focused and you had to. I mean, that was when they got racing each other and there was a bit of a gap and, and I had a little bit of a breather there to kind of think, but, you know, once Denny got closing in, I mean, it was back to business and, and you didn't have time to think about all, you know, wine and flowers and ponies and all that stuff. So <laughs> just sit there and had to get back to business and, and uh, but it was nice. I mean, after, <laughs> I, I got the flag at the flag stand and I thought, well, I'll turn in the you know, turn, come back down pit road backwards. And then I was like, you know what? It's my last time here. I'm going to go one more lap. And I went one more lap. And, and, and I didn't just drive the lap. I drove up there and where the crowd was, I did burnouts and rev the motor onto the chip. I'm sure Hendrick's going to love that. Um, but, you know, it just was fun to say, hey, thanks. You know, this, this place has meant a lot to me. It's, um, you know, it's nice to... If, it, if I don't win another one, it's cool to win the last one here. If it, if it doesn't happen again, it's cool. I'm, I'll be all right if this is the last place I win one. I'm going for more, just for the record. Don't think that I'll be satisfied. <laughs> I see pens going crazy. I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't say that. I didn't say I'm laying down. I'm just saying if that's the only one I get this year, then, then I'll be content. But um, uh, I don't think any, I think you've known me long enough. You guys know that I don't lay down for anything. So all you got to do is... Just give me that little bit of hope, and I'm, I'll, I'll run with it. Tony, thanks for coming in. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> the, keep this on, please. Can you keep this hot, sir, in the back? Uh, first place, 14. And second place, the 11 car have passed at track inspection. And we'll be going to the R&D Center for final inspection. Third place, the 22. Fourth place, the 78. Fifth place, 19. And the random 21 have all cleared at track inspection and have been released.